Welcome again to the lessons of the Enterprise Development and Investment Promotion Program. Today, we're going to talk about the Business Opportunity Identification Part 1. And it is the first technical program in the, in the EDIP. You know, as you know, in the EDIP, we're, we're having different modalities. The first module, which will start today, after we have to, uh, given the introduction on ARCID, the Arab Regional Center for Entrepreneurship and Investment, and the EDIP itself. What do we mean by EDIP? What is the essence of EDIP? And what are the goals of EDIP? And then, of course, we talked about the promotion. How do we promote an EDIP program in a country? Today, we'll start on the first lesson on the program on project identification. What do we mean by business opportunity identification and how we could do an identification of, of, of a business, how we can do screening of a business, how can we see this business idea, it relates to me as a person. Do it really matches me? Did it match my capability to start looking into it? Or should I look into another idea which ma matches my capability? And we will look and see what do we mean by capability? What do we mean by matching a capability of a potential entrepreneur to a business idea? So the outline of this uh, lesson of today is identification process. What is our process to identify a business opportunity? It is a process because it takes some time from a dream of an idea, thinking about the idea, to be motivated about the idea. This takes a process till we come into generation of idea. And this is what we will see in the coming part two of this lesson of today. Identification process. First, you should know your self-personal profile. What do you mean by this? Who I am? What do I want to do in the future? What is my age today? What do I want to do in a year time? What I want to do in a five years time? I'm in school, I'm in university, I'm working now as an employee in the private sector or in the government. I want to change my future, I want to improve my quality of life, I want to sustain and have security for myself, for my family, and for my community, okay, on economic security, which means I have to have sustainable income generation. This is what always motivates people and what makes people to think and to bring new ideas is to improve their quality of life to improve their income generation, to start doing what we call accumulation of wealth. This is all, it is defined on a personal profile. Do I have the motivation? Do I have the guts to be a risk taker? Do I have dreams I would like to materialize? People are different. Some people, they agree on what do they have. They live with what do they have. They want to live an average, sustainable, no difference, no changes, no improvement of their quality of life. But those are not our target group on enterprise development. Those are not our potential entrepreneurs which they will change their future, the future of their families, the future of their communities through economic empowerment. Of course, after knowing your personal profile, you have to look what are you, know what you are looking for. What do you want to do? Do you want to develop a business in agro, to be an agro entrepreneur in agriculture? Do you want to develop a business in environment, area or sector, to be a green entrepreneur? Do you want to develop a business in the area of health and fitness to be a fit entrepreneur? Do you have a project on innovation or research related? Do you want to be a technology entrepreneur, a techno entrepreneur? So you have to know what are you looking for. Do you want to develop a trading business? Do you want to develop a tourism business? 
Do you want to start a business that you'll start making money, income generation, so that you'll start uh, doing accumulation of wealth, which then will allow you to look and develop another bigger project with a bigger investment? Do you, do you want to start a micro business, then you should develop it into small and then to medium MSMEs, micro, small and medium? Do you want to be as a co-entrepreneur that you want to develop this business with another entrepreneur? Do you want to be an entrepreneur that you are in a big company or a business, but you will be working as an entrepreneur within this business? You should always ask yourself to know what are you looking for? What do you want to do? Do you want to start an innovative business that you want it to be creative in the business you're looking for? Do you want to repeat another business with adding uh, specific specification, creation of a need into that business? So this is a, a very important question after knowing your profile. You should know what are you looking for. Then of course we will come to generation of ideas. When I, when I start looking into my profile, what do I have, what I can offer, and then I look into what I'm looking for, this is will lead us to the process of idea generation, which we'll see it in the second part of this lesson. Identification process. We'll talk about SNAP investigation and evaluation. Errors in selection, we'll see that also. Key issues for project identification. Now we come to knowing yourself. How do I know myself? How do I question what are my abilities and what are my capabilities? Through experience and education, we we'll start with. You know, the way we acquire knowledge and we learn and we grow, develop ideas, personalities, information, you know, characters, it's all coming through education. Education which comes from the house, since we were kids. Actually, education comes when we are still babies in the tummy of our mothers. We started to learn, we started to know, you know, when, when our mother is happy or she's angry, the baby feel it. When we come out, you know, to life, we start learning from the first day. We started seeing who's smiling to us, who's not smiling to us. We started to know what's good, what's bad. We started to learn talking, speaking. We started to learn walking. We started to know habits, cultural habits, right or wrong. Then we go to school. In the school we learn education, knowledge. In the past, and till today, but with changes, a lot of changes, in the educational system, most of the educational system, we have been taught to learn. To learn, to look for a job. In so many educational systems, you know, especially in developing countries, there is no incentives or programs for motivation and creativity in educational systems. All what we do is we learn, we study. We go to school, secondary school, we might go to the college or the university, or we go to a vacation or commercial school, but all our dreams is about looking for a job, being a medical doctor, being an engineer, being a pilot, military officer or a police officer. You know, in the family, in the community, all the questions you are being asked, or all what they're talking about, that they want you to finish your academic education so that one day you will be a medical doctor, you will be a lawyer. Nothing related to innovation, creativity, an entrepreneur. So we grow with this education. But this education nowadays may allow me to think and to dream about a project idea. I might study engineering, civil engineer. 
it may make me think to develop a construction company. I might study something related to software development. It may, when, when the other elements are combined, it may allow me to dream to think about developing an IT company or a software programmer. I have studied something related to agriculture. It may lead me to think developing a project in agribusinesses. And, and, and. Coupled with this, of course, is my experience. The experience it is a very important element or domain which will allow me to start thinking, dreaming, you know, screening, you know, okay, if I'm doing this job, I'm being paid for this job, I'm being working for someone for this job, either public or private sector, why not do I do it myself? But of course, if I do it myself, it has to be with innovation, creativity. I have to have an input into it. Working experience sometimes is very important to allow people to start thinking if the other elements are there for entrepreneurship development and enterprise creation. It may allow me to think that I can start today looking into making an idea, making an idea, which means to start the process of looking into developing or creation, uh, creating a business, okay? Of course, sometimes education and working experience, they match each other. Because what I studied, I started working with it. So my educational background and my working experience coupled together will allow me to start generation of ideas. There's a very important, another setup also, is of course, the type of work, it could be related to my education or it might not be related to my education, but it helped me to look into an idea generation. There is a very important another setup, which is the talent. Sometimes in the personal characteristics of some people that they're talented. Talented, you know, mainly talented people, there are people who see things different than the average person. They can look and create things more and better than the average person. This is why we call them talented people. Those are people who are mainly, you know, they like to do things with their own hands, you know, people who have an artistic, you know, uh, talent, you know, uh, people who, 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 who could be architect designs, could be fashion designs, uh, uh, handicrafters, you know, computer uh, uh, fixers, okay? So sometimes the talent is very important also to generate, and some ideas, specific ideas in the identification process, if we don't acquire the talent, we cannot generate the idea. If we have the talent, it could be a very good boost for an idea generation. So if we look into education, okay? Work experience. And others, which is mainly important here, is the talent. Sometimes we may have one of these three, or the two of them, or the three of them, which are combined in an, an entrepreneurial background or entrepreneurial profile, which may allow him or her to identify a business opportunity. There is also a very important point, and this is a common, should be in any uh, uh, process of idea identification is what we call the entrepreneurial spirit. We need to have an entrepreneurial spirit which is always in the person uh, character or ability. And what do you mean by an entrepreneurial spirit? Of course, we will see this in detail in another lecture. But here we can define quickly what do you mean by an entrepreneurial spirit? Someone who has the ability to be a risk taker. And the ability of the risk taking, this is, it's, there, are two, there are several elements that should be combined on a person profile or personality to be a risk taker. If we bring this together, it will allow us, it will allow a person, you know, to be a risk taker and we say he has a high or relatively high entrepreneurial spirit. Sometimes, entrepreneurial spirit could be also, a very good 
source or support for idea identification. In some, in some, in some areas, you, know, you might not need the educational background, you might not need the work experience or the talent to identify uh, a, a business opportunity. You might have a high entrepreneur spirit will allow you to identify uh, a business opportunity and then to develop it into reality. In the personality, it is, it is a very important also element, I, I have to say this, because in the personality of the entrepreneur that there should be discipline, there should be an eye snapping that they can look into things different than, than average people, they should be uh, guts taking, they should look into opportunity and not to lose the opportunity immediately, they should jump to take the opportunity which is there in the, in the market. Uh, you know, they should be um, well precise in, in taking an idea, systematic in developing the project idea, and, and, and. This is all we'll see how an entrepreneur could be competent. We'll see it in, in the second lesson. But this is all defined in the personality of the entrepreneur. Objectives. What are the objectives of the idea identification? Investment capabilities, attitude to risk taking. Of course, there are personal considerations in all of this. Now, what are you looking for as an entrepreneur? You are looking for investment. You are looking to identify a business opportunity to invest in it, which will allow you to bring a lucrative investment. Technology. If I want to develop any idea to invest in it, I need the technology. From where I will get this technology? From where I'm going to source this technology? Who will help me to identify this technology, to evaluate and evaluate, evaluate and evaluate this technology? How this technology will help me to open new markets? How, if there's going to be an improvement or an enhancement in the technology which I will buy to, uh, today, I can have access to the future technology in the same domain I'm, I'm working in? Those are always very important questions, and all of those questions sometimes might not occur to the entrepreneur, but the business counselors have always to orient the entrepreneur in a new project especially which have the dimension of a technology or a technology sourcing. How I'm going to manage this project? You know, all of this comes in the, into the process of idea identification. How is going to be the organization of this, of this project? Okay. Who's going to help me in managing this project? I'm going, me as an entrepreneur, of course, I should start by developing the idea, thinking about that I'm going to manage the project. I have to do it myself. I have to be the entrepreneur manager, and not the manager entrepreneur, which means that the entrepreneur has to manage the project, not to bring a manager to manage the project. And then, of course, the project might grow. So how I'm going to organize this? How I'm going to do the marketing of my enterprise? How I'm going to do the accounting system of my, my, of my enterprise? How I'm going to hire? more people and how I'm going to develop my human, my HR department when I grow with the enterprise and developing the enterprise. Market. What is my market for this project? Who are my competitors? Where I'm competing? I'm competing at the community level, I'm competing at the national or the regional level, or I'm competing at the outside of the, my national boundaries. So, my investment, my technology, my management style, would it allow me to access this local market or beyond the local market? Do I have the ability to do that? All of those questions comes into the project identification process. Sectors, what do I like in the sectors? Do I have a sector preference which should be matching or should look 
or should have the background of my education or the work experience or my talent? Do I have to look into the sector which is related to the region or to the locality which I'm living in, which may, might allow me to identify project ideas, or I have to look into other sectors not related to the, my community, to the raw material available in where I do I live or in the country I live? Do I look into a sector where a lot of people and, and a lot of entrepreneurs that were in this sector or have to look into a completely a new sector? All of this has to be looked into and it is coming into the process of project identification. Government interventions. Does there government interventions in the sector I'm looking into? Do I need to depend on government incentives and government support to develop this or to look and to consider uh, this uh, support services during the project identification process? Implementation time. How much time do I need for implementing this project or the idea? Because, you know, I might need long time, I might spend so much money, okay, which is, which is going to deplete whatever saving or investment I have. So I have to see what is the time implementation frame I do have for this project. Does this time frame matches me, my, my financial ability, my time consuming ability, or it's not worth that I look into that, into that project idea and I have to look into other, uh, other project ideas. Um, in, in the process of project identification, we, we will realize that there are too many things comes at the same time. It's my personality, it is my work experience, it is my education, it is my talent, is the, is the, is the sector or the preference I'm looking at, is the, is, the, is the market I'm looking at, is the technology where I'm trying to get or source this technology, would it be good, would it match what I want? All of this comes together, and all of this we have to look into it at the same time. All of this comes into a melting pot for me while I'm squeezing myself, squeezing my brain to come and with a project idea or ideas and then to screen those project ideas. Profitability. We started with investment, now we are into profit for profitability. Now after I have gone through investment, technology identification, what kind of government support I get into that, the sector preference, the time implementation, what would be my profits? Because even a project which does not come out with profits, so why do I need to do it? Because here we're not talking about social entrepreneurship, that's something else. We're not talking about charity. I'm talking about developing a business where I will make money out of this business, which I will benefit from it, my family, my community will benefit from it. Second, now what you are looking for? Degree of risk and its forms. And of course the location. But what do you mean by degree of risk? What risk I'm taking in developing this project? Because I'm going to put money. I'm going to borrow money. I'm going to invest time, my time, my family time. So what are the real risks for me in this project? The location I will select for this project. Does it really matches the project needs, the project profile, or I'm just taking this project uh, uh, place because it's cheaper, because it's closer to my house, because it's closer to my work? No, I have to be more serious and I have to think a lot and investigate a lot when I'm coming to look for the location of my place, when I'm going to start the business. Because this is define a big role in the success of the, of the business and in the profitability, of course, of the business. An example, for example, I want to open an ice cream, a gelato, okay, shop. Are there, in this locality where I'm going to open this gelato or ice cream shop, are there any other shops there? This is a basic example. I want to open 
a suit tailoring shop. This suit tailoring shop is in the locality I'm trying to open because it's cheaper. There are other four or five. This is, of course, a simple basic idea. But then, of course, yes, I may open it. But it's more innovative. It's more tailor need, tailor tailor make toward the, the people or the community which is there. Yes, then I can come and compete, even in a locality where there are others. Yes, there are others. They have an ice cream, but my ice cream is better because it is health oriented. It's organic. You know, we don't. Use, I don't use a lot of cream. You know, I use natural flavors. This is also can play in my orientation of my place. So it means I will be having a better. Uh, better points than my competitors, but I have to look into that. Sometimes there is also personal consideration. There are some religions, you know, for some businesses that I cannot do it because the religion does not allow to, me to do that. Sometimes my feelings, you know, that no, I don't want to do that, and I cannot do that, though it could be a lucrative and a profitable project. We should look into all of this, you know, and this is all happens by itself when we do the project identification process. Lifestyle also, the lifestyle is very important. You know, what does, what does my lifestyle look like? Do I have enough time uh, to look into this uh, project? Do I, I can spare some time, uh, more time, less time for, for, for these projects? You know, all of this, it relates to if I can do it or not. Here, sometimes, also when I talk, when we talk about lifestyle, lifestyle, it, 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 it could be for the entrepreneur or the lifestyle for the target group where I'm looking, you know, to develop this project idea, okay? Is the target group I'm looking for, um, do I need to develop for them just to satisfy their basic needs? Do I look for what we call uh, creation of needs, tailoring of needs? This will all allow me to penetrate in their lifestyle and develop the business which suits their lifestyle. Then, of course, I have to look into my target group. Is the target group, is it, do I go by age for the target group? Do I go by sex, males or females? Age, do I look into adults, teenagers, children? Do I look into income groups, middle income, low income, high income? This is, will all define the lifestyle of my target groups, which may, make, may allow me to work it out, to work my business, my business idea, to generate the business idea, to let me think about the business idea which will make me profitability after I do the investment and the risk taking toward that target group. Sometimes the, the importance of money, okay, uh, it's, it's make me to squeeze myself, makes me to think, uh, you know, every day, uh, that I need the money, I need the money for my family, so let me think, let me try, let me see, you see. This is sometimes is one of the first, um, actually, imperative uh, reasons, you know, for the entrepreneurial spirit to develop as money need. That you need the money, you really require the money. Sometimes some people, by nature, that they're, they have entrepreneurial spirit that they want to do it. They want to be different, they want to create, they want to innovate, they want to, risk, to be risk takers. But then a lot of people also come into they want to improve their quality of life by the importance for money to them. But sometimes also they need really the money. They need the money. They cannot, you know, their, 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 their living and survival conditions really obligate you know, them, them to look, to bring money so they can do any job to make money. You know, buying and selling, street buying and selling, working by hand, knitting, you know, doing handicraft uh, objects. But this will allow them gradually to identify and they're in the process of identifying an idea 
and growing with an idea and getting into another idea. It happens as an automatic process. Of course, you have always to speculate, you know, well, if I do this project, it does not work, what will happen to me? If I, if I open this project in that locality, it does not work, what should be my second option? So we always speculate. We have to speculate. Today, we finished, you know, business opportunity identification part one. And if you need further information, you can go to the website which will allow you to understand better and to get more knowledge about business ideas identification part one. Thank you very much.